Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 11, Equilibrium Video 1. Today's topic is conditions for equilibrium and the center of gravity. Objectives are know the condition that must be satisfied for a body or structure to be in equilibrium, understand the meaning of the center of gravity of a body and how it relates to the body's stability, to be able to analyze situations involving center of gravity. Conditions for equilibrium. There are two conditions. First condition is the net force has to be equal to zero. The second condition is net torque has to be zero. So net force means the net external force, and net torque also means net external torque. Example, equilibrium or not. So here are three, three situations. Situation one, this is in equilibrium because it satisfies the first condition and the second condition. Situation B, this body is not in equilibrium because it does not satisfy the second condition, the net torque is not zero. Situation C, this body does, is not in equilibrium because it does not satisfy the first condition, net force is not zero, even though the second condition is satisfied. Test your understanding. Which situation satisfy both the first and second conditions for equilibrium? A situation one, a seagull gliding at a constant angle below the horizontal and at a constant speed. Because both the angle and the speed are constant, that means velocity is constant, net force has to be zero. Second of all, because velocity is constant, so there is no rotation, that means net torque equals to zero. So situation one satisfies both conditions. Situation two, automobile crankshaft turning at an increasing angular speed in the engine of a parked car. The car is parked and parked, net force equals to zero. However, it is its angular speed is increasing. That means there must be an angular acceleration. There has to be a torque. So the second condition is not satisfied. Third one, a thrown baseball that does not rotate. If it does not rotate, there is there's no torque. Second condition is satisfied. While it sails through the air, well, because it's going through air, so there is a net force of gravity acting on it. So net force is not zero. First condition is not satisfied. So the answer is one. Next one, the center of gravity. So center of gravity, if we ignore the variations of G over vertical dimensions of a body, then the body's center of gravity is identical to its center of mass. Because we know G actually varies from the center of Earth. But say if we ignore it, it is very, very small uh, compared to the distance. The variations for the height is very small compared to the distance of the object to the center of the Earth. Uh, so if we ignore it, we can say the center of gravity is identical to the center of mass. And this is how we calculate the center of the mass in x dimension, y, and z dimension. The net gravitational torque about 0, 0.0 on the entire body. To find this object, suppose this object is, is falling, gravity will produce a torque. And how do we find this torque? We find this torque um, by finding uh, uh, random particles first. So for our arbitrary particle, the torque produced by the particle's mass equals Ri cross Mig because that's a force, that's a position vector. To find torque produced by all the particles, we add all the particles, each particle's torque together, R1 cross M1G plus R2 cross M2G and so forth. Since G is the same for all the particles, so we're factoring G out. So we have the sum of Mi, Ri cross G. We know the mass of the whole object equals to, we simply add all the particles together. Then we go back to this equation. We divide it by whole mass and multiply by the whole mass. So based, essentially you multiply the whole thing by one and the, the expression does not change. So here you divide it by the whole mass and you multiply by the whole mass. So the top divided by bottom, this gives you actually the position of the center of the mass. W. So the net gravitational torque about O on the entire body can be found by assuming that all the weight acts at the center of gravity. So the torque equals R center of gravity cross W.
finding and using the center of gravity. So for a homogeneous symmetrical body such as sphere cube, circular sheet, or rectangular plate, and other symmetrical objects, the center of gravity is at its geometric center. So when a body acted on by gravity is supported or suspended at a single point, the center of gravity is always at or directly above or below the point of suspension. For example, you're holding a cup. The center of gravity is right along this line. So we can use this fact to actually to determine experimentally the location of the center of gravity of an irregular body. For example, to determine the center of uh, a gravity of this mark, we can use one hold on one suspended mark from any point. A vertical line extending down from the point of suspension passed through the center. Then to find the center of the mass, we know it should be on this line. We suspend a mark from a different point. So a vertical line extending down from this point intersects with the first line. This intersection is center of gravity. This is one way to determine center of gravity. Another way to determine center of gravity for an odd-shaped object is simply put, put it on a tri triangular shape to balance. When, when this odd shape can balance at this point, that means the center of gravity is right above this point. That's another way to determine the center of gravity of a regular body. Center of gravity and a body stability. So when a stable body at equilibrium, equilibrium is supported at several points, its center of gravity must be somewhere within the area bounded by supports. For example, take a look at situation A. Center of gravity is over the area of supports. So this car is in equilibrium. Take a look at B and C. The center of gravity is out bound outside of area support. So in both cases, the vehicle will tip over. Another thing is the lower the center of the gravity and the larger the area of support, the more difficult it is to overturn the body. Let's take a look at this example. So a uniform wooden plank of length L equals 6 meters and mass M equals 90 kilograms rests on top of two seahorses separated by a distance D equals 1.5 meters. Located equal distance from the center of the plank, your cousin JJ tries to stand on the right hand end of the plank. So if the plank is to remain at rest, how massive can JJ be? So basically, this is trying to find the center of the mass. The center of the mass, uh, so here's the plank. We can say the plank is kind of like all the weight is concentrated right in the middle. So the center of the mass between the plank and your cousin JJ has to be on top of this uh, sawhorse. So that's C, the center of gravity equals to the plank's mass times zero. So this is your origin O plus mass of your cousin times L over two. That's the length from the center of the plank to your cousin divided by the mass of the wooden plank plus the mass of your cousin and that gives you this expression. We know that center of gravity has to be on top of the seahorse. So the seahorse is at a location of D over two. So D over two has to be equals to M over big M plus little m times L over two. We know D is 1.5. We know big M is 90. We know L equals to six. So we can solve for little m. M equals to 30 kilograms. So that means if your cousin is less than this mass, then this, the wooden plank will not tip over. However, if your cousin is more, then the wooden plank would tip over. Test your understanding. So a rock is attached to the left end of a uniform meter stick that has the same mass as the rock. So in order for the combination of the rock and the meter stick to balance atop a tri triangular object, how far from the left end of the stick? should the triangular object be placed? Well, so here is M. The other M is right over here. So the triangular object should be placed at the center of the mass of the, uh, between the center of the mass of the rock and meter stick system. So over here is M, over here is another M. Actually, triangular object should be placed right over here at 0.25 mark, right? You don't even have to do math because the mass of the rock and the mass of the meter stick are the same. So 
this tri triangular or fulcrum has to be right under here in the middle of the two. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.